What's up everyone and welcome back. So today's video is going to be all about my first roll that I shot on Lomo Color Negative 400. If you guys did not see my past video, I think it was my film Q&A video. The Lomography Color Negative 400 film stock was one that I had been wanting to try out for a little bit for a variety of different reasons and at the time that I filmed that video, the roll had been sent off to my film lab and I got the scans back so I wanted to spend some time with you all going through it today, some of my first thoughts and first impressions about it and just show some example photos from this film roll that I shot. So a few quick facts about Lomography Color Negative 400, which I'm just gonna call Lomo 400 and hope that that is okay. Cause I don't feel like saying Lomography Color Negative 400 every single time. But few high level facts about it. It is a color negative film and the one that I shot was actually a 35 millimeter version of it. It has a box speed of 400, obviously from the name and it is approximately $9 per roll. That's how much I got it for, so I got it in a pack of three. A few reasons why I wanted to try it out. The main reason, and probably definitely the biggest reason, is the underlying color tones of it. So I've heard in the past that you can tell the general color tones of a film stock based on the color of the box of the film stock. I'm actually gonna grab the box of it now. So as you can tell, the box itself is very, very blue. And what that should be able to tell you is just the underlying color tones of the film stock is going to be cooler. And I used to purposefully edit my photos very, very cool toned back in high school when I first started out in photography and I loved it and I still do really love cool toned photos but by shooting a lot of Kodak film stocks they tend to be a lot warmer and that's just what I've also come to love. So that's the number one reason that I wanted to shoot it. Number two is that it's decently priced. Honestly, I was curious about how this film stock would compare to Portra because it is almost Portra priced. Um, normally I get Portra for a little bit over $10 a roll and like I said, I got this one for about $9 a roll. So it was interesting to be able to see my preference of the two because even though Portra 400, which is the film stock I usually go for, is a professional grade film stock. I was actually curious about price point and how Lomo 400 would compare. And then the, lastly, it is actually my first Lomography film stock that I've ever shot before. This is kind of my first foray outside of Kodak. I've shot Ilford before, but even then it's a black and white film stock, so it definitely feels different to compare to Lomography 400, but this is my first Lomo film stock film stock, so I was really excited to see what the images would come out as. So I did want to go through my first and so far only film roll of Lomo 400 today. A little bit of background about these images. This was These were taken on a trip that I took with my parents out to West Virginia. I've gone out here in the past and I've taken images out here in the past and they've always been naturally very cool toned. A combination of just the mountains showing up as very blue and then the fact that there is a pool that's very blue. So all of that combined together with a blue sky, you're gonna get a lot of blues. Right off the bat, it picked up the greens beautifully. I I find that most film stocks that I shoot do pick up greens pretty well, so I'll just leave it at that. But I wanted to focus a little bit on the blues and the highlights. So I'm gonna insert some images that I took both on my X-Pro2 as well as on my iPhone just to see the comparisons. On The images on my X-Pro2 were taken with film recipes from Fuji X Weekly for Portra and Ektachrome. So they're not raw images, they're not completely unedited. The iPhone photos are gonna be closer to what I saw in person. And so it's a great way to compare the way that the two different mediums picked up 
the clouds in the sky, which is kind of the biggest difference that I see. So on a lot of these Lomo 400 images, it's it looks very washed out. I don't know if this is the way that I shot the photo. I don't typically try to over or underexpose anything, so I don't think it's an overexposure issue. I shot at a pretty high f-stop because it was very sunny outside and so I also don't think it's an aperture thing and I'm just curious if it's actually just the film stock itself. So that's kind of the biggest thing that I noticed right off the bat when I opened up these film scans. The next thing is just any color other than blue and green. So there wasn't a ton of non-blue and green colors, but in the images that did have some browns from like the wood railings of the buildings or around the pool, or even the pictures of the wildflowers that were purple, those colors tend to look very faded. So I'm almost, I'm also curious if that is something from the film stock itself or the way that I took images. And again, since I didn't take images on a different film stock, it's hard to compare if it's a film stock, if it's the way I exposed my film camera, which I pretty much use the same process as I would when shooting any other film stock. So that's another thing that I notice. And then the last thing really is skin tones and I want to touch upon skin tones because I find that skin tones are pretty important when taking images especially if there's people in them so Lomo 400 based on what I've heard has not been brought up as a portrait film stock if you want to take portraits people will usually recommend Portra and so I wanted to really see how these skin tones would show up on a very cool toned or supposedly cool toned film stock and the first thing that I noticed really is that it's very orange. So again, a lot of stuff with photography and preferences and your opinions on things are going to be subjective. If you shoot Lomo 400 as a portrait film stock, all power to ya, but it's just more orange than I would personally prefer. I'll also preface with the fact that I really didn't shoot portraits on this roll of film, so it's you know, it's hard to say like straight on face what their skin tone looks like, but from the two images that I shot that include my mom and dad in bits and pieces of their skin, it is more orangey than I would like. And I did look up example photos online or other people's work on Lomo 400 and I have to say I still have that same general consensus by looking at other people's images. It's really not too blatantly obvious because I haven't seen a lot of portraits alone using Lomo 400. A lot of it is street photography, environmental portraits, you know, where it's more about the background so it wasn't like blaringly obvious to me but when you're specifically looking to see how the skin tones picked up it's something that I definitely noticed in those images and again we'll put everything on here so you can have a visual of what I'm talking about. Other than that though I I did enjoy the film stock. I really did. I think the images came out beautifully. It was a beautiful area. The greens are really pretty. The mountains are really pretty. The faded colors could actually look very, very artistic. And you know, if that's your style of photos, then that's your style of photos and it does a beautiful job at picking that up. The only thing that I would comment on really is the price point. And I would say at $9 a roll, I honestly do prefer Portra over Lomo 400. Even in some of these indoor images that I took, I posted a post on Instagram comparing the same composition taken on Ultramax to the same one taken on Lomo 400, and I actually do prefer the Ultramax in those images. And honestly, I don't know if I'm just accustomed to the warm tones of Kodak film stocks now, and that's just what I prefer. So I did want to still make a video on this film roll. I wanted to show some photos in case you are looking to try out Lomo 400 in different scenarios and see what that ends up looking like. Overall, like I said, 
I do still love the way the images turned out and I would definitely shoot again because I have two more rolls left of it to shoot. So if you guys have any opinions or criticisms on some of these images and Loma 400 in general, Lomography color negative 400. So please don't come at me for shortening it to Lomo 400 Please be sure to leave your comments down below. It also helps me out in the YouTube algorithm and Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it If you enjoy content like this about film and digital photography Be sure to subscribe to my channel because that is what this channel is all about and I will see you all in my next video